My name is Dr Jennifer Johns and I'm the President of the Victorian Division of the Heart Foundation. I'm also a practising cardiologist working at the Austin Hospital in Heidelberg and Epworth Hospital in Richmond. Despite the huge advances we've made in reducing the overall mortality from heart disease and stroke over the last 50 years, it still remains the biggest killer of Australian men. So heart disease, stroke and other vascular diseases cause more than 30% of all the deaths in Australia each year. So it's, it's a huge problem that uh, many men don't realise they're at risk from. So men tend to have their heart attacks about 10 years before women. Once they've had a heart attack, their outcomes on the whole are, are pretty good because of the new generation treatments we can offer them. But one of the problems is that men tend to delay seeking help, partly, probably for many reasons, some of which we don't understand. They delay seeking help because they deny. They often prefer to think that the pain they have is due to indigestion, they think it may go away, they don't want to disturb the rest of the family, they may not want to worry their spouses. For whatever reason, they delay seeking help and this leads to worse outcomes than could be achieved if they came to hospital quickly. A heart attack occurs when there is blockage of a major coronary artery. These are the arteries which supply oxygenated blood to the heart muscle, so this is to the pump. And the blockage can be caused by a clot, it usually is a clot, blocks the artery and that area of muscle it supplies is then damaged. Damaged heart muscle leads to a weakened heart, the heart can't pump oxygen adequately so the rest of the body is denied of the oxygen it requires. Cardiac arrest occurs when the heart stops pumping completely and that is due either to a very rapid irregular rhythm, which we call ventricular fibrillation, or the fact that there has been so much heart muscle damage that the heart just can't pump. When you have a cardiac arrest, the heart stops pumping, the body, including the brain, does not receive oxygen, and the patient dies. The warning signs of heart attack can be quite varied, but the classic features of a heart attack, which many people would recognise, is chest discomfort or tightness all the way across the front of the chest, sometimes radiating up into the throat or the jaw or the shoulders or the arms. It can also be pain felt in the back between the shoulder blades. And this is often associated with a feeling of nausea, sweating, shortness of breath, generally feeling terrible. That, those are the classic features of heart attack. However, warning signs can also be much more subtle. They can be predominantly shortness of breath or nausea, a general just unwell feeling in the centre of the chest or the back. And so any abnormal sensation that someone has that's associated with them feeling really unwell, should be a heart attack should be considered. Usually the warning signs of heart attack occur very quickly. So when a patient has a blocked artery and is starting to get heart muscle damage, the symptoms have an onset that's very, very quick. However, some patients get warning signs over several days beforehand where they get minor episodes of chest discomfort, perhaps while trying to walk quickly up a hill or sometimes even sitting around or lying in bed. And the episodes may last only a few minutes, two or three or four minutes at a time. And then there is the sudden onset of more severe symptoms that don't let up. So any discomfort which is continuous for more than 20 minutes, um, we need to think, could this be a heart attack? When a coronary artery is blocked and a patient has a heart attack, this can cause a variable amount of pain. Sometimes there can be mild chest discomfort, other times severe pain. However, it's really important to remember that the amount of pain does not correlate at all with the size of the heart attack. So we say that any amount of chest pain um, should be taken seriously because it does not reflect the amount of potential heart muscle damage that's occurring. Well, it's really important if you or someone you know thinks they're having a heart attack that you seek help immediately. And this means dialing triple zero and asking for help. It, 
there'll be an operator on the end who can take a history and help decide whether or not you're having a heart attack. An ambulance can be dispatched. They will come to wherever you are, try and work out whether or not you are having a heart attack. And I always say that if it's a false alarm, well, that's fantastic news. You may not be taken to hospital. You may be taken to hospital where the diagnosis can be really sorted out. But it's really important if you or someone you know thinks they're having a heart attack, don't call the GP. Don't sit around and wait. Do not drive the patient to hospital. Don't drive yourself to hospital, but dial triple zero and ask for help. It's important to remember that, that a lot of people delay when they seek help for many reasons. They deny their symptoms. They're worried about making a fool of themselves, creating problems for the ambulance service. Sometimes they're even wor worried about how they'll pay for it. But many people call because they're too embarrassed. They think they may be wrong and they don't want to create more work for everyone. I just remind everyone that no one ever died from embarrassment, but millions of people have died from heart attacks because they delayed too long in seeking help. These days the treatment for heart attack has uh, changed considerably over the past 10 to 20 years. The most important treatment we can offer once a patient gets to hospital is opening up that blocked artery so that we can restore blood flow and oxygen to the heart muscle. And we can dramatically reduce the amount of heart muscle damage if we get patients in early enough. So in some hospitals we have the availability of a 24-hour cardiac cath lab. So this means we'll take patients directly to the cath lab. We will put a tube into the groin and up into the heart where we can actually put a wire and a balloon across that narrowing or blockage, open it up and put a stent in the artery to keep it open. So we can very quickly, often within 30 to 90 minutes after the patient arrives, get the artery open, establish flow and, and dramatically reduce the size of the heart attack. Now that service is really only available in, in big cities and some regional centres. But if you can get to hospital, there are other options available as well. And this includes using clot busting therapy. So using an intravenous drug to dissolve the clot in the artery, again opening up the artery and restoring flow to that damaged area. So these treatments really only work if they're given in the first few hours after a heart attack occurs. And that's why we say minutes means muscle. Every minute you delay results in more heart muscle damage. More heart muscle dies the longer you wait. So it's really important to get to hospital where you can be offered these treatments. After we've managed the acute event, there are a number of drugs which are used long term to reduce the uh, effects of the heart attack and to help reduce the risk of having another heart attack. The mainstay of treatment are antiplatelet drugs. These are drugs that are used to thin the blood to help flow through the coronary arteries. The most important of these is aspirin and there are other blood thinning drugs that we use as well. We also use cholesterol lowering drugs to lower cholesterol because that has been shown to reduce the risk of heart attack in the future. Um, there are many other groups of drugs that we also use so it's very common for a patient when they initially go home from hospital after a heart attack to go home with perhaps four or five new drugs that they may not have had in the past and some of these drugs will continue for about 12 months. Several of them will continue lifelong. After you have a heart attack, your life will change and your lifestyle probably needs to change. I think it's really important to remember that the overwhelming majority of people, and especially men who have heart attacks, will get back to their job. Um, they may need to take a few weeks off, but they will get back to work and they will get back to their normal level of activity often very quickly. In fact, I'm amazed at how many men will come to me a few weeks after a heart attack and say they've never felt so fit because they've made those lifestyle changes. 
However, it is important to realise that there may be impacts on work, on uh, leisure activities, the amount of exercise you can do. So these sort of things really need to be discussed with your GP and your cardiologist if you have a heart attack. But I, th I really would like to stress that most people, especially men who have heart attack, will get back to work and doing all the things they like to do. Having a heart attack is a major life event. It has a huge impact on someone's life. Uh, there are many effects, both physical and emotional. One of the really important effects of having a heart attack is that depression is very common after having a heart attack. 60 to 70 percent of all people having a heart attack will suffer depression afterwards and this can vary from mild uh, low mood to really quite severe depression but it's a really important aspect that people often don't realise. It is a major life-changing event and depression is really common after heart attack. We know that if we can identify people who are at high risk of heart attack and we get them to modify their lifestyles, we will reduce the risk of them having a heart attack. So the really important things people need to be aware of is smoking. Smoking is the major reversible cause of heart disease. It's really important to completely stop smoking. We know that physical inactivity is a major cause. We know that increasing your physical activity, just 30 minutes of exercise at least five days a week and preferably every day of the week, will significantly reduce your risk of having a heart attack or other forms of heart disease. We know that maintaining weight is important. 60% of Australian men and women are either overweight or obese. And we know that if we can get them to lose weight and be more physically active, active we will reduce their risk of having heart disease. It's really important to have regular checkups with your GP to do things like check the blood pressure. We need to treat high blood pressure to reduce the risk of stroke and heart attack. You need to know what your cholesterol level's like. Everyone sh over the age of 40 should have their cholesterol checked, see the GP and decide whether or not it requires treatment. And it's really important to reduce the risk of diabetes or to diagnose diabetes and have it adequately treated. The best way for men to prevent a heart attack is to stop smoking, to exercise regularly and to eat a healthy diet and maintain a healthy weight. And it's really important to remember if you or one of your mates seems to be having a heart attack, take action, call triple zero and call for help. <laughs>